Welcome everybody to Extreme Power No Handling and today we're dealing with the 1974 Toyota Corolla SR5. Now the most powerful engine I could uh, put into this car was the uh, 5.7 litre V8 but it's been slightly upgraded to that but I uh, can't tell because of the way the uh, stats are laid out on this game but it is still the V8 nonetheless and yeah 780 horsepower 739 pounds feet of torque and it weighs 2172 pounds so a hell of a lot of power not all that much weight though cars from this around 73 to 75 haven't done all that well the Renault Alpine putting around a 1 minute 25 and the Fiat X19 putting around a uh, 1 minute 28 so yeah I've not got massive hopes for this but it was requested so yeah I'm doing it for that person so yeah let's see what this can do I'm expecting a lot of bouncing off the rev limiter not all that much traction because this car didn't even have 100 horsepower from the stock so yeah more than 7 times the power in a car that's more than 40 years old Barely do 100 mile an hour. The only other thing I've upgraded on this, besides obviously uh, the engine swap and upgrades on that engine, is the uh, gearbox. Because I was afraid it would top out on one of the straights, and that would be good for you guys or for the uh, time. So, yeah, that's the only thing I've put in it is a street transmission. It only lightens it a little bit affects the top speed. Alright, pretty smooth so far though, it is struggling for traction. Break a little bit earlier just to get a feel for it. big fear with this is because it doesn't have all that much traction to start with, or grip, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the amount of power it's going to have, it has, I don't think it's going to be all that much used, because it's just struggling to put that power down. It's easily one of the slowest cars we've had on the back straight there. Best time I've had. Hopefully, improve on it, but this is not going to be a top 10 car by any means. Another thing with this is it's got a bigger engine up front with turbochargers on top of that, so I'm expecting a little bit of understeer here and there because standard suspension and tyres to deal with such a heavy uh, weight up front. My controller is vibrating like mad because this car can't keep this keep uh, having enough traction. Smoking tyre. that this car's stock, but I can't say I'm all too much of a fan of it like this. I'm sure if you actually did the handling upgrades it would be a fast car. Not massive improvement there, still above 1 minute 30. Let's try and be a bit more brave with this thing. Brakes are poor, and there's that understeer that I was on about.
the steer. Yeah, this isn't. This is easily one of the worst cars we've had to drive. Obviously not the worst because you got the likes of the VW Camper to take that crown, but yeah, not good at all this. I think uh, one minute 32 point whatever it was is the fastest we're gonna have. Fastest we're gonna have. So yeah, there we go. One minute 32.172, which is pretty damn poor, quite frankly. Yeah, it's just ahead of the Alexa 68 above 595, the Ford Deluxe Coupe, and well ahead of the VW Camper. So yeah, not awful, but top five worst that we've had so far. It's even uh, worse than the uh, Ford Bronco which I thought wasn't even all that good to be honest. So yeah, pretty poor. Had no traction or grip or whatsoever. Plus you understeer through some of the corners really did kill off any chance of it being any sort of quick. And way slower than like, so the, that Fiat and that uh, Renault Alpine that I was on about from the uh, around the same era. So yeah, not good at all should uh, really stick to driving this car with either handling upgrades or just keeping it stock. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.